everybody to the NVIDIA Hearthstone Pro-Am Tournament. Our second match of the day is Tice from Team Nihilum versus Sixo from Team Archon. Last week we got to see Sixo play a more fun show matchy type thing, and this week I expect very much the same exact thing. Uh, you know, even though <clears throat> the the weeks have been long, uh, these guys are still having fun with it, which is the important thing, and I hope you guys did too. Life Coach versus Dog was certainly very entertaining for me. What do you think, Nimsh? Oh yeah, I think like Life Coach's dog was amazing with the new decks, new cards, and um, I have high hopes for Six of Ties. And uh, we know that uh, both guys are innovating as well. They're bringing interesting um, decks. Uh, Ties not playing his Druid uh, signature class, but he's bringing Warrior. He has a lot of success with Warrior. Six is bringing Warrior as well, and I'm excited already because I want to see and cast some Green Patron. That's an amazing deck. I hope they are bringing it. Yeah, uh, well, I think people are starting to come around on it. People have been climbing ladder, like to the top of legend with Grim Patient Warrior. Um, and I know Tice was really skeptical. I actually stayed at his house a couple weeks ago after Seed Story Cup, showing him the deck because I bought the Seed Story, but I didn't get to play it. And I was like, dude, this deck is awesome. And he's like, no, man, it's bad. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm like, all right, so Tice, this is what happens. I'm going to play a best of five with you. And if I beat you with Grim Patient Warrior in this best of five, you have to play it for NVIDIA. And so he's like, okay. And then he did. We, we actually, I actually beat him with the Grim Patient Warrior three times in a row. And he bought to NVIDIA and he won with it that week, but it wasn't streamed. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited if he brings it. I'd be pretty sad if he decided to bring Control Warrior instead. But I think Sixo would be a guy who did bring Grim Patient Warrior. And if that is the case, then uh, I'd, I'd be... I'd be ecstatic, to say the least. Oh, yeah, definitely. And um, <clears throat> Green Patron, uh, as you said, is uh, is climbing to become one of the uh, key archetypes. I think people are still struggling to build up the best list. Like, there is nothing like a best list. Like, people are still trying different cards. But uh, this is the new old Miracle Rogue. Like, this is a combo deck that you really have to uh, learn how to play. And a lot of pros are there, like, in the beginning, they don't like the deck. They, they struggle with it. But then after playing... 20, 40 games, they start having amazing win percentage with the deck. So that would be great to see that. But other than that, Six are bringing Shaman deck. It might be his mech, Shaman, um, with um, Fel Reaver. And then Rogue, um, maybe something else again, like a Pirate Rogue, maybe Gang Up Rogue, Dog Rogue, Six Rogue. Possibilities are there. I think so. Uh, I'm, maybe the Mill Rogue would be a interesting take on things uh, i know a lot of people have been a fan of of even playing it it's a really fun deck i'm not sure about the viability and strength the, the big thing about mill rogue that i heard from a lot of people is that it's at best a 50 50 percent win rate because the deck can sometimes beat itself like we were talking about with other things not the most consistent Wait, so it wins also uh, interesting too what's up Nimsh? So it wins 100% versus the field, but it loses 50% against it's, itself. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess if that if that the percentages work that way, I'm not exactly a math major. Oh, math. But, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you on that one. So here we go. We have uh, Warlock to start things off here for Tyus. What does Sixo have? Wait, Sixo has a new haircut. Hype. Oh, he actually uh, got a haircut similar to how Lothar got his hair done recently, too. Jeez. Then, are you saying he's copying Lothar with the haircut? Look, look, I think we could all benefit from copying Lothar once in a while, man. Not bad. The Lothar, Lothar is a, he, he's, he's, a, he's an absolutely beautiful man, and he's also good at Hearthstone, so I think uh, he wins in every category. And he's also married, so... He, he actually has won every aspect of life so far. Um, looking at the hand here from Tice, this is going to be very complicated to deal with from the rogue's end of view. There's a lot of these minions spawning. There's one ones and tokens. Um, but he does have Phantom Knives, which is the ultimate uh, the key to unlocking everything here. Uh, he also has Violet Teacher um, and Backstab. So Violet Teacher plus Spells will enable Sixo to, uh, to build up some kind of a board that will be able to trade with minions. Um, even though Tyson's hand, as you said, is, is just amazing. Um, Fender Vargas just supporting the strategy. There's this Void Caller that will be able to summon the Doom Guard. So which right. version is this? Like, is this the Sea Giant version as well? Or is it like more Void Caller, Malganis kind of zoo? 
Uh, well, it's too early to tell, but usually you can extrapolate based off of what that type of cards are being drawn. Um, you know, for example, Void Caller it, and Doom Guard can't be the only synergy. It probably has to have that Machanus in there too. Um, and if he has implosions, it makes more sense for the Sea Giants, although Malganus does buff the imps as well. Uh, and that's, that's it has a lot to speak to the versatility of the deck. Um, it's not just like one thing that you can interpret based off of uh, a card or two. You have to take it and consider all the possible threats. That's what makes Warlock so scary right now, in my opinion. It is one of the most powerful aggro decks in the moment and very popular in ladder as well. Uh, but then again, Sixo is a Warlock specialist, uh, a zoo specialist. So if there is anyone else who can dismantle zoo like Sixo, I couldn't name the person. I think Sixo is the best guy who can dismantle the zoo. Um, turn five for Sixo, there is an Azur Drake pickup. Um, pretty good. You can draw a card and set it up. But then, do you kill that Void Caller? Like, Void Caller is annoying. Uh, well, we all know the answer to that is uh, it's a bad idea, considering the Doom Guard could come out. But this also gives Sixo the guarantee that Doom Guard comes out this turn pretty easily. Just have to play the Abusive Sergeant and then the, um, the gang, boss. gang Boss, and then you guaranteed get it while you kill off the Drake. Not bad. Well, a free Doom Guard is always good. Uh, that gives you one more mana. I guess two. You can play, you can coin out the Haunted Creeper. How long are you going to keep the coin for? Is there any way to tap here? Like, if you tap, if you get a Mortal Call, does it change anything? You probably played it there in the same way. Yeah. I can understand that, too. That's not happy for Tice. Uh, the coin into the Haunted Creeper is definitely the right play here. You just attack face, right? You're not even going to acknowledge this Farseer? Uh, you can kill the Farseer if you believe that in Gangbus is actually important and you want to keep Gangbus alive. Um, also, 4 damage to board means that uh, Sixo will have to have Flurry, Deadly Poison, and the spell damage, or Flurry and uh, Sharps or Oil. Ah, uh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Sharps or Oil also, is definitely... Sixo has a weapon on one durability. So even if the if he clears the board now against Ice, that is spending a lot of resources and not being able to strike with the weapon. All right. Well, looks like uh, we're just going to have to go through the hard way, clean things up, and hopefully this Van Cleef can start pulling some big weight too. But... There is easy ways to do damage with the power of overwhelming on Tice's end here. And there is a knife juggler as well, so Ooh, that's not good. That's not good at all for six though. Oh it doesn't have mana to play everything though. He's at, he's limited by his mana slot at the moment. I think this is still a very powerful turn for Tice. Um if you defend Vargas, you can kill um, Edwin with six damage. But do you really actually go for power because if you like right now you have eight points of damage on board power overwhelming is plus four that's 12 maybe you can actually go for face and not clear just as a possibility yeah i, I still think that uh clearing this off is really important you're ultimately about board control and your opponent demonstrated a little bit of difficulty of dealing with a lot of these smaller minions, so you crossed your fingers. Plus, you used one of the uh, fan of knives already. I like it. Well, getting a fan of knives or a flurry here would be so good. Being able to clear the spiders just with deadly poison, weapon attack, and then flurry. But no, Sixo didn't get those cards. He, get, he gets Farsi, though. So right now, the game is kind of in equilibrium still. Uh, Zoo is not a deck that's really aggressive with regards to, to charging. It's more about the board presence. And there is Implosion. Implosion and Shuggler for the next turn. We're doing Implosion now. Well, you guaranteed kill it off. Um, again, your opponent just showed that he has difficulty dealing with the minions with one health, right? He had to attack the Doom Guard. Still no Flurry and no second fan. 
Well, you, you can start developing one ones with a violet teacher. Pay attention, class. Seems to be the best course of action if you just double deadly poison or just one deadly poison. It doesn't really matter. You need to start cleaning up the board as much as you can. I am ready to learn. But then if you clear the board with weapon, you're still taking damage. So you're getting, getting lower and lower. That's five imps on the board. Double juggler. Oh, man. That two-time juggler is going to be really difficult to deal with. He needs, he, needs, he needs sprint into blade flurry. Like, blade flurry at this point is not good enough, I think. <clears throat> wow. There you go. The excellent juggle. Oh, two to the violet teacher. That's not good. I still think the sequencing was a bit awkward for Thais. Um, getting a life top first and... <laughs> And getting a direwolf would be actually amazing. And right now he kind of... Uh, that's a void caller. But still, um, you always should draw first, dice. He might right. be tired as well. It's, it's a good point. You know, he played a little quick. He should have sequenced it correctly. But, uh, you know, this this could be the big turning point. 6-0 picks up sprint and he gets blade flurry in the process. And that's a powerful. That's a huge moment right, right now. He even gets the fan of knives, so he will be able to deal with uh, the one ones. Well, you do tap here. Uh, there is an Rubin egg. This is not terrible. This is scary, too, if you're 6 0. One more Void Caller, one more thing to worry about in terms of what demons your opponent has. Yeah, Malganis is still an option here. Second Doomguard, Jaraxxus. Thais needs to pick up a demon, I believe. If he gets Morganis, that would be so sick. Like, implosion into the 5-5. Five five. Oh, he actually can... He can still implosion, right? It's like plus 5. So implosion for 9 yep. mana. And then attack the Void Caller into the 5-5. Five five. And get Morganis. Well, he can do it better than that. He can tap into a demon and then use abusive sergeant because oh the implosion oh it's so annoying you can implosion oh. for three and then use the abusive sergeant on the egg no oh, this is fail <laughs> wow that's so but the bad RG is, yeah it is it is bad for ties but then the rg is fair because he had a four before all right now you are forced to use your Void Caller to kill the 5 free? You might be. If he doesn't, if he's, is he dead? There's 6, 8, uh, 14, 18 damage. Yeah. <clears throat> if uh, Tai chooses to go for face, then he dies because the oil. Yeah, this is so bad on so many levels. SI7. So how much damage is there overall? Uh, I think there's 12 damage right now. This is plus or 5. 13, 13. It's 4, 9, 10. Yeah, 6 don't need some minions on board. That's for sure. And uh, Thais, at, the, at the moment, Thais doesn't have a way to deal with this uh, board from, from 6 -0. So 6 -0 looking pretty good. Flame nope. is the worst. Dead. Double owl. owls. Well, he's running two owls, obviously. Oh, jeez. But it, uh, you don't. So terrible. Uh, he's dead. The yeah, oil is just so gonna clean here. everything up. With uh, oil is dealing six points of damage, then deadly poison is plus two. It's eight from those two cards. So much. That's enough, basically. So Six is going to take game number one versus Thais, even though Thais got pretty close to killing him. Yeah, this was a, this was a good example of how Zoo, with too many tech cards, um, like the second Iron Beagle was not really that useful here. Uh, ends up just biting him in the butt. Really can't do anything with that onto the board. Uh, in some scenarios, it's amazing. You know, if the opponent plays Sludge Belchers and you just want to get good trades, or if they're playing something else, especially the mirror, if you want to silence eggs, silence um, Ink Gang boss, etc. In this scenario, though, really, really tough pill to swallow. Um, although the rogue is is usually pretty good against the zoo. Sometimes you can go for big tempo swings, prep, 
Blade Flurry, Saps uh, on things that get Defender of Argus. You know, those kinds of power moves are huge for the Rogue. So this is a good matchup for 6-0 to start things off with. Um, that said, the lineup is still pretty powerful, though. Um, also, now, also now 6 knows that this is Zoo. Uh, so this favors his mulligans because before uh, he didn't know. Like it's, it's, it could have been a handlock, and you do mulligan differently against different types type of, types of warlock decks. So now Zoo gets um, a bit of a debuff. Like Sixo will know how to play uh, and how to mulligan against it. And that's the green patron deck, by the way, from Sixo here. Game two, Sixo oh, versus yeah. Ice. Oh yes. Now uh, the thing about Grim patron mad mirrors is that um, you never truly know if you're ahead or behind <laughs> um, unless you're just convincingly onto the board because there's always that possibility that they just drop worse on Commander and, and Wombo Combo. So it's it's always a very delicate matchup. What's funny is that both these players are showing Armorsmith early on, so it could hypothetically still be a, a Warrior Mirror matchup for Control if they weren't really paying close attention, but... They'll see. They'll see soon enough. They'll see. Yeah, soon I, enough. I don't think it will be about control at all. Like you have to be really careful. And no, um, it's just funny because it's armor smith into armor smith. Yeah. Like that's not yeah. really how you start a mirror of, of uh, war song commander battles. True. Um, but then we we have to be on the lookout um, for the new cards or like different cards. Like let's say Sixo is playing root quarters and um, Tice might not be playing the root quarters. Uh, are both players playing Inner Rage? Who is playing Sludge Belchers? Uh, maybe somebody is playing Gromash. And uh, those cards really change the dynamic of the deck. Right now, I'm looking at the hands of both players. No. There is the Frothing for Tice. Uh, he will be able to push a bit of damage here. He has that Acolyte of Pain, which is great. But then Sixo has those loot hoarders. And Battle Rage. And Battle Rage can be also... It is an amazing card. Like, um... That was even suggesting at some point that <clears throat> Battle Rage is so good right now that maybe Contra Warrior should be experimenting with that with the card. Ty said that? Um, Tides of Time. Oh, Tides. Tides. Yeah, Tides. It's interesting. I mean, Battle Rage synergized so well with Death Bite. I know so many people were trying it out in the beginning. They just felt like it wasn't consistent. The thing that I don't necessarily like about <clears throat> dropping the Frothing Berserker is that if his opponent had Acolyte, He'd be able to draw a lot of cards off of it, draw two cards, and then force your weapon hit as well. But um, because it didn't happen to be that way, it ends up being fortuitous for Tyus. There is a Nimsh Inventor. I approve of this card. Yeah. I, I think Nomish Inventor is great. Before, people were running Azure Drakes. I think Nomish Inventor fits the curve a little bit better. And it also synergizes with Warsong Commander versus the Drake doesn't. You get that charge on the Gnomish Inventor, which sometimes helps. It's not that it, it's like, you know, game breaking. It's just another reason to add it in. Yeah, and having a cantrip, which means like drawing a card uh, from a minion, is pretty good in this deck. Like, most of people, uh, when they first play it and they don't know how to play the deck, they say this is it's inconsistent and unstable. But then there's so much draw. Like you have those inventors, you have those hoarders. Like you have to decide what you really have. But like loot hoarders open, inventors open. Right. Everybody's running battle raid. Some people run commanding shout. You have acolyte of pain. So many ways to draw cards. Ooh. All right. Uh, yeah. No, speaking of which, another big thing you can do is big tempo plays, like with the Dread Corsair. I first wasn't in love with the Dread Corsair, but the more I've thought about it, the more it's like, ah, it's all right. It's not bad. Six oh picks up just the, <laughs> the battle rage. That's fine. It's like in this deck you do cycle a lot, and um, there is a whirlwind for six oh. So six oh possibly has a way to to draw a lot of cards. Yeah, this uh, Acolyte is so big, though. Drawing two, three cards, effectively. Now, the thing about Grim Patron is that um, you can have as many as you want on the board, but if your opponent has Whirlwind Effects, he can almost effectively clear it if he has Commanding Shout. But I feel like Commanding Shout has been cycled out uh, for more consistent cards in general. Some people have been also experimenting with Slams and... You know, do they play one or two inner rages? You know, are they playing five drops, like you said, with Sludge Belcher instead? It's all interesting questions. Um, I don't know if people have found a 100% refined list, though, uh, so far. 
but generally speaking, people do top out at um, at Gromash. There is a Gromash. Um, I wonder also like how important Armorsmith is in the mirror as opposed to not having Armorsmith because Thais had two and Sixo didn't. He might not be even playing it. Uh, well, he, he he did play Armor Smith on turn two. There was two Armor. Oh Smiths. yeah, yeah, he did play it actually. Yeah. But um, Armor Smith is so critical against aggro decks because <laughs> you just won't survive, and the whirlwind effects really give you a, a a health boost. In the mirror, I can't help but think that it's a liability. It's like it's a way for your opponent to get two grim patrons onto the board guaranteed, and if he has a whirlwind, it doubles to four, and if he has a death bite, it fills up the board guaranteed. So like Armor Smith is just like meh. And is the health really that important against a deck that really focuses on controlling the state of the board? And I guess you could say it's important for the combo if your opponent has Frothing Berserkers. But um, I don't know. It gets really complicated once you start doing all the combat math because every Grim Patron that hits the Armor Smith gives him a lot of uh, gives a lot of health and, and, and all the bumping. So it's not it's not crystal clear yet. True. Uh, right now, Six Mana is in a weird position where he doesn't have those minions like Dice. Dice was able to play those Numbish uh, Inventors, just set up some kind of a board without the combo. So for Six O, it's just armor up and fast, like yeah. nothing really to do. He lacks mana. Torison just, would be amazing. It's okay, though, because his opponent has minions that are weak on board. And also, all of them help him buff Grim Patron. So why, why is there any rush? There really isn't. And now he's going to put up even more minions. This is actually... A bad spot for Tice. He's going to allow his opponent to clear the board um, pretty effectively. How do you Although clear the board? <laughs> Actually, wait, 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 wait. He can't. Uh, he can't whirlwind. So yeah. at best, he can only go one for one with all these grim patrons. That, that's the thing. Like, but can you really go one for one? Because patrons do not go one for one. All right. Let's see. Um, he definitely needs to come out. He needs to do something with this board. The question is, well, what he's gonna is. answer with his own set of grim patrons. He's gonna have uh, four total. Uh, he's gonna trade one in for the five one, I guess, or even the three three. A bit of a sequencing error, I believe. Uh, just stacking the two one first. Um, just giving dice a bit of an extra armor. Yeah. I guess and you take out the three health grim patron, right? Yeah. All right, so he wasn't able to clear, and right now, how much damage is this? This is 11 points of damage. Uh, he Five. can still get one more patron. Right. He can basically clear. Now, well, Tice can clear now, that's for sure. Yeah. And he can execute one of them. So, uh, you know, I, I was accounting for the fact that Sixo could use the Whirlwind last turn, but because he couldn't, now it's like he's fallen really far behind the board. But at the same time, he has the Whirlwind Effect this turn, right? He's got Grim Patron, Warsong Commander number two, with the Whirlwind Effect. Yeah, but it's still like, Whirlwind doesn't really help. It's like Swipe. Um, it is useless versus those kinds of decks. Because you do produce more Dwarves, which are full, full health. Yeah, it's true. This is really a matchup that we're going to see more, and uh, we need to explore it. Like, it's so interesting, and it's really difficult. Like, if you don't exactly know how how this works, it's really hard to say what's the what's the correct sequence. That's why this is so difficult to play. Not only to play the mirror, but even versus other decks. Like, you play it a bit differently every time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, Sixo does have a clear now. He's got uh, Death Spite and Whirlwind. And uh, Cruel Taskmasters executes whatever he wants to chain into. Yeah. And he still has the combo in his hand, so um, suddenly it, it's starting to look good for a 6 So It really will depend, like, what is Tice going to draw here? Yeah, uh, well, that's not an activator for Gromosh. Or is it? Maybe he gets uh, Inner Rage. Well, Deathbed is actually amazing because it's really close to lethal next turn. That's six points of damage right now. And Gromash with uh, Deathbed next turn is 14. Right. Sixo needs an armor smith right now. 
No. Nope. Arm Smith. He needs and... an unstable ghoul, maybe. Yeah. Um, but he's not going to draw any cards, so I think that's it. Yeah, that's right. Whatever. He can't stop the 14 damage from going to the face. And he's not going to deal 40, uh, 44. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so look at look at Sixo holding the second combo of the War Song and the Grim Patron being ineffective. Uh, that's just the pain of going behind your opponent in the mirror, I suppose. You, you're just on one less mana. And if you have the coin and you used it early and you don't get the opportunity to use that extra whirlwind effect, it's just not as impactful. Tice was able to grab too much momentum from it. And it's like Sixo controls the board now and he's able to sneak in a lot of damage, but yeah, it's just too late. If he had like if he had just like a little bit more health, if he had six, seven more health, this game could have been completely the opposite direction. Yeah, right now, even though he got control over the board, he is in a great position to win the game. And uh, two turns, he will not have any more turns after this. All right, he decides to not make any more dwarves and just yeah. hopes that there is nothing for Tice, but Tice has that Grimash. Well, the thing about uh, using Whirlwind in that position, there is such thing as creating too many Grim Patrons. <laughs> if you create too many Patrons that are at one health, your opponent can just clear a lot of them with the Whirlwind effect, and yeah. they don't create any more because the board is overpacked. So there is a delicate balance uh, on terms of what you do or uh, how many Grim Patrons you, you try to combo and, and uh, go off on. So a really interesting matchup. Uh, you know, I'll be the first to admit that it's still pretty new, so learning all the small nuances is part of the process. Uh, but I, I have a lot of fun playing this deck, personally. I think it's awesome. Oh, yeah, I de definitely agree. And um, I also tried it. I'm going to grind this deck till Legend next, uh, next season uh, because it's so much fun to play, and it really... Uh, requires practice, like lots of practice. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that means that Tice is uh, going to even up the series. Six, so it did take the first one, Rogue versus the Warlock. Um, now we're going to see if that Grim Patron Warrior can take out the rest of the decks here. Against Hunter, super important you get Armor Smith. Against Midrange Hunter, though, because I know Midrange Hunter is starting to get popular, I personally am digging it. I think um, it's pretty fun to to do stuff with uh, freezing trap doesn't truly affect you in the late stage of the game because how much charge you have uh and you can draw a lot mid-range hunter gives you a lot more time to to pick off those cards and if you can get execute on the high mains and you get the grim patrons on the two twos it's like yeah actually it's not too bad on the other hand it's like i'm really curious about the shaman deck. Uh, i don't know what six is playing to bring i know archon loves that mech shaman yeah and if it's Mech Shaman, Mech it's Mech. just going to get destroyed by Zoo. So Tice has a pretty big opportunity to have a strong lineup advantage here. Well, then again, if... Um, yeah, Shaman might be uh, troublesome versus Zoo. But then, like, pat Patron that can win versus uh, versus Zoo easily. But uh, the players are ready, so we have game number three, six versus Tice, Green Patron versus Face, Sham uh, face Hunter. I would say, like, seeing the Iron Beak. I'll, I'll um, tell you this is face. And uh, seeing the Lepronome, I'm sure what it is. Yeah, it looks like it's the face hunter. And face hunter is really tough, but... Six so that's the Armorsmith, like you said. Yeah, that's Armorsmith cool. definitely changes the matchup here. That's a huge deal, too. Getting cool Taskmaster. That's really wow. bad for Tice. Not only he deals with Lepronome easily, he will have... Um, Armor Smith on turn two, and maybe even the Arcolite and Free. Uh, I'm always on the fence, like playing Arcolite and Free, because you do face weapons. Like if there's Eagle Hornbow, you're only going to draw one card. But maybe you can actually risk it. Depends on on the board in free turns. Or if Armor Smith turns. survives, I mean, Arcolite gives you a little bit more health too. So every little bit helps, you know. It, this matchup is definitely still. It's kind of like you are playing Control Warrior in a sense, although you just have a quicker combo. You don't have to necessarily just wait for Gromash and Alex Straza. Oh, Diog is the worst. Oof. That hurts. It does. And um, even though there is no weapon for dice, there is this Abyss Surgeon. So he will be able to clear Acolyte if Sixo decides to drop the Acolyte, drop the Acolyte here. He, go, he goes for Warsong. So he is playing Warsong because he doesn't want Acolyte to die to, to the weapon. Oh, man. Well, 
Uh, unleash the hounds. Is that is that a good? Really good here. I think it uh, able to help clear almost everything. You can't leave that war song up. That's just I like think, an ultimate way to die. Yeah, I think this is like the one of the best niches you're going to get. Or is it really like this is patron warrior actually? So um, against patron, you can maybe get a better niche. Yeah, that's a good point. But. You know, against this type of risky play from Sixo, like he knew that his opponent specifically had to have these two cards. It's like he needed to have abusive and unleash for it to get truly punished throughout the whole thing. But uh, it looks fine for Sixo. Right. Sixo is the one drawing cards. Sixo is the one with the weapon. And uh, if Six if Sixo plays the whole board of green patrons. Then uh, Tice will be forced to trade into them. Like Tice was already forced to trade in the minions, and Tice is playing a, a face hunter. He should go face. Yeah, it's a good point. Tice has to do things unoptimally because he can't afford to leave his opponent's minions up. It's the same story here. Haunted Creeper. You'd rather play the Wolf Rider, but because he does so, uh, it would get destroyed by the Death Bite Whirlwind effect. And, and there is some good drone. Yeah, Thurston is nice. And uh, I, I felt like maybe we're win, but there is not, not enough mana. But still, getting those double patron kill commands. Uh, but still, he will have to silence one of those dwarves. <laughs> that seems so terrible. Yeah, but if he doesn't, then he's going to be in danger of losing too much on the board. If his opponent has War Song number two, you can drop it and then start destroying everything on the board. You can destroy everyone after they get in here. <laughs> yeah. But then there's um, then there is a Torison, and Torison is amazing. It's a five-five uncontested on this board. And yeah. um, there's also Acolyte Clear. But then you're using two cards and Thorson sits in their hand there. I think Thorson's definitely much better. What do you do with the dwarf now? Do you just attack it to one? Yeah, you're you're putting your opponent at 18. You know, you never know if you draw Gromash. And now that Whirlwind's zero, it's like a turn eight potential damage. He has to deal with it too. Not to mention that Thorson is a threat, so if he has to kill Command it or something, it's it's damage away from the face. Like this matchup from the hunter perspective, well, actually, Tice is going for face here, right? Just because of kill command, he has to take his chances. Yeah. But uh, I was talking to Strife Crow on a, on a team chat, and uh, Strife Crow basically uh, told me that he's waking up at the night at night and uh, having nightmares about green patrons shouting, "Everyone, get in here!" and destroying <laughs> his aggro decks. So, oh, poor Strife. Is a nightmare to Agrodex. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, he's got some ways to draw cards this turn and do some stuff. The only problem is, can he race fast enough against his opponent? If he plays Green Patron and um, tries to go for more uh, big combo damage. Okay, so he's going to trigger it first. I figured maybe he would want to try and use the whirlwind effect with the acolyte first to try to get it, but he's going to sequence in this way so that way he can maximize his damage. He's just going straight into a race as much as he can. So how much damage is there for Thais? Um That's five plus four. Nine. He's so got actually nine points of damage. Thais is he just one, needs damage one more point for three mana or less. And that's possible, but that's a blank, and that might be it. Like, right now, he has to clear this board. Well, um, I mean, it's, it's not, not it. he can still use it defensively. Yeah, but then there's double loot hoarder. So now, Sixo will have free draws, possibly, to get into a lethal situation. He can also. Uh, what if he just like kill commanded his mad scientist? <laughs> is that too? Uh, is that too crazy? If you got explosive trap and um, attack four to face right now, put them at four. 
Then they armor up, they have six. Uh, you have explosive shot damage, that's four. Hero power, that's two. I think that's actually not bad. I think that's the play. That might be the play. If you if you run a double explosive trap, you want to take the chance. That's, that's actually crazy, but it might work. Give yourself a chance to top deck something. Because well, if you, like if you kill, you attack with the weapon fa for face. So there's like six points of damage, and uh... I was actually curious because it's like, what if you? Um... Okay, so he's just gonna take the really safe route here, mill the road. Um... Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know actually a way, the best way to go about it. If you wanted to play around Armorsmith, you could have also done it too, but you would have missed some damage to the face. Yeah. Well, for six on now, just playing no much inventor, I believe, is uh, is the thing. Uh, Tice can still top deck something. Like six, I will laugh to armor up this turn to get the seven. And then Tice has a hero power that's five. Plus, uh, we probably would like to kill the spider. Mad scientist, not really. You need to oh, avoid the situation when you where you're locked with the exploded trap. Mm, oh man! Much. So you want to draw another card? Draw another card with the loot hoarder. Uh, loot hoarder attacking to one one might be an option. Picking up an armor smith would be so big. He doesn't get it. So he now he has to armor. play acolyte though. Do you play Acolyte? Like, you have to think about second Alnish. Uh, if Alnish is three minions, then... Three, five... He is playing around it. Alright, so Alnish is five points of damage, that's not enough. Abuse Surgeon is not enough. Alnish actually would be fine if this is Explosive Trap. Uh, you're right, assuming it is, and it... And it looks like it is explosive trap, but Groma should be able to finish this game because he knows it is explosive trap. So Sixo once again manages to just barely beat Thais. You know that was the case with uh, Rogue versus the Zoo, and now Grim Patient Warrior defeating the Face Hunter. Narrow edge, but man, was it close! Remember, at one point, Thais was one damage off lethal. Yeah, that was really close, and um, that kill command into Med Scientist for them. That might have been a play. That, that might, might have been a play. Are you sure it wasn't yeah. just too creative and cute? Just because it's like so counterintuitive. So I was just like, oh yeah, he killed Commander's own scientist. Are you proud of me, Raynat Senpai? But it's we it's probably not exactly the best play all the time. Um, because he would have lost damage. I think his rationale might have been that if he kill commanded the scientist, um he he still has to deal with the fact that there's a bunch of uh, minions on board that can still punish him if he has like armor smith so like if he had armor that's why he like traded a little bit of minions it's just like less armor smith value although if he wanted to do that he could have also played kill command and a scientist attack the grim patient twice fill up a full board and force his opponent to attack before playing armor smith because if he had seven minions you can't actually um with no uh, board on your opponent you can't actually activate the trap before uh armor smith comes down because it'd be uh, six minions with two health and one minion with Grim Patient with a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. So there was a way to do it. Uh, there's a lot of lines of play. Ultimately, I think um, it's up to debate. Tice took like a middle-of-the-road approach, but it didn't work out for him, and now he's down 1-2. All right, so six one needs to win with his Shaman. We haven't seen the Shaman, but we assume this is the Mech Shaman with Fell Reavers and a little burst. Mech Shaman with far but used to kill Stanislav Sivka on turn three. And uh, this deck can be amazing. It can also um, just fall on, it, on its face and die. We've seen that before. Yeah, that's right. Um, it just feels like those mech decks in general, if you don't, if you draw the wrong side of the deck, there's really no recovery for it because you're not running a lot of AoE to, uh, to control the state of the board. And the damage that you do is very negligible if you try to catch up too late. Um, not to mention that it just doesn't race as effectively uh, if you don't have the right sequence of cards. So, Whirling's Appomatic allows you to do like 
big racing damage, but if you don't have it and you're like racing with spider tank, it's not, it's not going to like outdo a, a face hunter at all. So I, I'm a little bit worried for Sixo here. Um, I'm thinking Tice still has a pretty strong advantage going to this game. Although we forgot about this thing, the fire guard destroyer. Fire that is the destroyer. New and uh, maybe that's the big X factor here that I'm, I'm not accounting for. Yeah, that card might change stuff. But then look at those four drops, like so many four drops. Why can't I hold all those four drops? He will have to mulligan some of them. And then for dice, um, well, that's a pretty good mulligan. Uh, Lepronome, Hunter Creeper is amazing. Wolf Rider, Akin Golem. You can mulligan them. You want to get the bow, I believe. Glaive Zuka, amazing card versus Shaman. And um, normally, Face Hunter is a very good deck versus Shaman because Shaman needs minions. Oh, he actually gets Worgen and Glaive Zuka. Oh. Perfect start for dice. Yep, and it's great. He even has the, the coin too, so that way he can. Maximize his damage. That opening hand, though, for six. So, what are we were talking about? We we're talking about how this mech deck can sometimes draw the wrong side. And it looks you like just, that's the ugliest side possible. Just removal. Just do a crack of face. He, uh, wait, is he actually? <laughs> that seems like wasted damage. Five damage to the leper nims. Come on. I mean, this is the th this is the problem though. You just run out of. Um, you, you don't have many options to deal with stuff. It's just like you have rem like burn and that's it. I mean, if uh, Sixto doesn't pick up another minion like a Neutron here, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He has to rock biter down this Worgen. He needs this. F okay, he needs this Fire Guy Destroyer to hit a seven. That's like his only chance now. It yeah, needs to roll high. I mean, and I'm talking super high. It can't be like, you know, four attack. All right, so this will be the moment to hit it. It's actually the lowest. No, second no, lowest. Two. Uh, wow. Oh, but he gets cool. another one, so he has a second chance to hit something big. Right. This might just be a straight up race here. I don't think there is much to race um, being a 12 on turn four. Oh, seven? Uh, it's reasonable. I mean, he hits for 11 next turn, and then his opponent, he has Crackle and Lava Burst, which... It's not enough. It's not enough. <laughs> but we can dream. Uh, if he would hit Leper Gnome for five, no, he would be dead, probably. Like, I was thinking, like, if he would Crackle phase instead of Leper Gnome, but then he would be so dead. At this point, Dice can just throw that bow at 6-0. Just throw it away. Toss it across the screen. Yeah, uh, or dual wield those bows and just spin to win. <laughs> and give 6 -0 another haircut. Oh, Taunt Totem. Hold on. Oh, wait, no, no, he's got on these. No, 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 I need the hounds. Yeah. Weapon. Hounds the arm, though. Yeah. Well, it was definitely a fast game. And if, you know, if he didn't have the mana for it, say he only had five mana, then who knows, man. Yeah, if six would get another turn, that would be, what, 11 plus 5, 16? Yeah, that would have been le lethal. It's a little bit unfortunate that the race ended up going uh, towards Tice's way, uh, if you're a Sixo fan. But Tice does tie up the series here, going to game number five with the... With the zoo versus the mech, and I have to feel like this is a really good spot for Tice. Um, this is really a mech, though. We haven't seen any mechs, right? We've seen Pirate Shredder. It might be kind of like a new version of a burst shaman. It's... Yeah, it, it, you're right. It could be a mid range shaman um, with an emphasis on the Fire Guard Destroyer, like carrying the mid game with damage. Uh, you're right. Um, but he also drew like Dr. Boom and Ragnaros, so it's like those yeah, are like yeah. the heaviest cards in this deck. He got really unlucky there, I think. Maybe uh, the second game round he can draw into a better curve. Even wow. so, like Imp Gang Boss is really problematic. Like you can't really deal with it easily. It trades so well into Noyotron and your totems. Defender Vargas, I'm another card that's really troublesome. Um, void, call, void Caller, you know, just getting those Doom Guards earlier. And... Um, 
Right now with Thais, because we're going to see Zo versus this kind of shaman deck, mech shaman, aggro shaman, face shaman, whatever, uh, Zo will just try to get that shaman to fight with the minions on board and win eventually, where Sixto will try to deal damage. The only good thing for Sixto is that Warlock is actually dealing damage to himself as well. That's true. That's the big problem of, uh, well, just in this deck in general. All right, so uh, you know what? You, you could be onto something here, Nibs. We're seeing like, okay, Power Mace definitely confirms that it's more mech oriented, but we're seeing, you know, more cards that are indicating a mid range shaman approach, and it's not necessarily a, the aggressive mech shaman. Oh, okay, so we have the Whirling's Appomattox, so that, that kind of settles the debate, I suppose. Yeah, that's, that's really aggressive then. So he so like last ter last game his draw was so bad. It looked like another deck, and if if your hand like on turn six looks like you are playing something different, this means you're going to lose the match, or at least the game. Well, for the match, Sixo still has a chance. What do you think about Sixo's hand for this uh, particular match for for uh, for Zoo? Oh, well, it's interesting. Um, the power mace is usually super important. Uh, it's just that right now he doesn't have an easy way to set it up uh, because of Haunted Creeper, so he just has to Earth Shock it. I can understand that. Also, a bad uh, a bad turn three here for Tice. He doesn't have anything other than this Abuser Sergeant. Yeah, it's, like, this is not up. great. I think you do kill the Cogmaster. Uh, you want to, as a zoo, you def definitely want to fight the board for the board, and uh, you can suspect what kind of deck Sixo is playing. So here, just Power Mace, clear the board, and set up a great turn four with um, both mechs, and then turn five, you'll be able to coin Fire Elemental. So it's going to look uh, good for Sixo the next couple of turns, but then that Void Caller is a threat. Like you always have to think about Doomguard being dropped. Yeah, if you don't respect it enough, you're going to get punished. Oh, here we go. We have an opportunity to see some really big plays here. I think you go for it. Like, because if you if you play Mech Warper and you play Whirlwind's Appomatic, both are easily contested by the, the Void Caller. And if you go for Fell Reaver, that's not a, a, an easy card to deal with. Oh, but against a deck like this, where there's so many small minions that they could be played. Void well, you're going to... Yeah. Yeah. You're going to lose a lot of cards, but then Thais doesn't have a, a good demon in hand. He might actually go for the uh, implosion here. Implosion and um abuse of sergeant. He needs to hit for free at least. And he misses. Wow. That's a very weak implosion. That's Pretty terrible, considering that he knows that his opponent can deal with um, the Void Walker with just a Power Mace. Do you still go for the free Void Walker? Yeah, you need to. Otherwise, he gets a pretty easy trade. I mean, like a free Void Walker, which is kill, uh, the, like attack the eight six with Abusive Sergeant and the free four. I don't think it matters that much. I mean, it matters that you can you want to use a Beast Surgeon against something else, maybe. And give yourself a chance to draw into a demon that can get dropped from the Void Caller. Alright, 6 going all ham. Jeez, 10 damage to the face. No demon for dice. No, but he's got Defender of Argus, so that's a way to, for him to stall out on his opponent. But that's where um, that's where Fire Elemental is really huge too. It snipes a pretty easy target. It does, and um, it's really looking really good for Sixo having those Fire Elementals in his hand. Destroyer, nice card as well. Really supporting this deck. Yeah, the best scenario here is to taunt up the Void Caller and just try to uh, be as defensive as possible. I mean, at this stage, you don't care about him burning any more cards. You just need to stop dying on board. The best way to do this is to um, defender. In, well, 
I was what expecting about, him to defend the Haunted Creeper and then use the two imps to trade into uh, the Whirling Zapomatic. I think I like Defender. I think it's fine. Like I was thinking Defender Imps and then uh, use one Imp to kill the oh. Zapomatic. Use the second Imp to kill the 1-1 the one, one, uh, and it stays live. So you have a 2 on taunt because here this is so dude. much damage. That's 20 damage dealt by Fell Reaver. Yeah. Have you have you seen Fell Reaver in World of Warcraft? Like the first time, for the first time, do you remember that? Have you seen that? No. It's, act, it's like you, you enter the zone. It's a Hellfire Peninsula. It's like all red. And there is this big monster, which is like like a, like a castle just walking there. And you can't even, you, you can't attack it, but it just crushes you instantly. This is how the Fel Reaver, uh, big Fel Reaver is, yeah. and how dangerous he is. That 4 roll was so big too, because it allows him to clear the board now. Um, but, you know, Tice also could have squeezed in, I think, another minion if he accounted for the 4 roll. Second another Fel Reaver. Reaver. Jeez. On the and that, that means that Sixo's going to be stuck with this hand, effectively. How much damage because is this? Tice can just guaranteed mill him out. Oh man. Doomguard. Well with Doomguard at least he can kill the Fell Reaver. Um, um Well, Sixo has one last card in his deck. Yep. And that's the final card with the two in his hand. But here's the thing, Tice only can work with one card too per turn. His hero power is effectively useless unless Unless he can remember every single card that's been burned. What do you think that last card is, by the way? Uh, lava Burst? I, I didn't... No, I think he already dumped the Lava Burst. It has to be, like, the second Power Mace or something. No, he just he just burned the second Power Mace. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... Well, and that's a Rogue oh, Biter. That's Biter. actually huge. Three points of damage right there. Oh, man. Tice needs to uh, get a second Doom Guard, or he needs to get a Defender of Argus with the Simp Gang boss. Oh, that's so it. big! He actually gets oh, Defender. Man. Wow. If he can just survive, he might be able to just make six or run out of damage. Yeah, it is, it is possible. A free fives. How do you deal with that? That is so devastating. Wow. Well, Sixo well, has the Rock Biter to help him push through, and it's so crazy. That Fire Guard Destroyer rolled the lowest possible. It rolled the lowest possible on the plus attack that it can't never, get past this Defender of Argus buffed Imp Gang boss. Never lucky, baby Rage. But uh, it's entirely true. Like I don't, I don't think Sixo had uh, much uh, success with those Destroyers. And uh, he needs to go for like a flame to totem here to be able to clear the board. Ooh, that's not exciting at all. The force and spider. No. That's all right. it. That's wow. It. Look at that. Tice ends up surviving barely. The fire guard destroyers. Turns out it needs a little bit of rework here for uh, it to be effective in the deck. Or maybe just needs to not be a four attack minion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Six that's for sure. Literally anything else. Um, yeah, like that was an amazing match to um, to watch and uh, really clutch, like really close. Also, like you know, coming to that uh, game five and being so close. Like uh, if like a high roll, maybe a different card and rogue biter, um, a, a different decision along the way, and the match will be actually uh, in Sixo's hands. But Tice is the one who actually takes it and uh, wins versus Ark and Sixo here. Um, amazing right, performance. Man. Yeah, so uh, that wraps up the second series of the day. We're halfway through. Two best of fives all going the distance. And we've seen almost every class represented so far. I think we're only missing Paladin at this point. So good stuff all around. Been enjoying it so far. We saw two Grim Patron decks. Uh, we saw a really interesting control rogue deck from Dog. We saw Giant's Mage. We even saw a Priest. So 
uh, everything, all the stops are being pulled out here in the video Hearthstone program. Hope you guys have been enjoying so far. Make sure to go to esports.geforce.com. Check out all the cool stuff, the standings about where all the pros currently sit in the, the rankings after six weeks or even how your favorite players are doing in the open. And as well as check out the Shield tablet offers, which is uh, what you can use to play for Hearthstone or as well as a collection of games that's on the Shield hub. I've been checking out myself. I've been enjoying it. Styles is great. We're going to take a few minutes, and when we come back, we're going to have more action here at the Pro-Am, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. 